Every step you take up the Grand Canyon is like a leap of tens of thousands of years in time. Where one band of colour ends and another begins signifies a dramatic change in conditions on the Earth. Geologists have managed to read between the lines when it comes to rocks. They can select a rock and get to know it, discovering how old it is and how it was formed. One of the best clues to learn about a rock's past are fossils. And in this petrified sand dune, I've found reptile tracks. These are all individual footprints of probably the same lizard or early reptile that walked up the face of the sand dune. And this particular footprint here <clears throat> nicely shows the individual toes of the animal. Geologists have studied these rocks and discovered that about 260 million years ago, this layer was desert. But as we reach the top layer, which is about 250 million years old, we discover fossils which belong to a completely different environment. What we see here once used to be a broad, warm, shallow sea. And the reason that we know that is we've come across the rock type called limestone. And limestone is made up of a bunch of little bits and larger bits of shells. And I'll just wet this shell right here to make it stand out a little bit better. It's called a brachiopod, and it's much like the shells that we find on the beach today. You can see the outline of the shell here, just as the oyster has an outline to its shell. And the brachiopod has a hinge here where the two valves come together, just as an oyster has a hinge here. And this fossil shell here is from a creature that lived in a warm, shallow sea 275 million years ago. And here's another one down here. These fossil shells are part of this limestone rock layer that makes up the final layer at the top of the Grand Canyon. All these brown knobs sticking out of the limestone are individual fossil sponges. And we have a better example over here. What we're looking at here is a fossil sponge. And we know that because we can see these nicely preserved pore spaces, just like modern sponges have. And we know that modern sponges live in warm, shallow seas. Therefore, this sponge probably lived in a warm, shallow sea also. Well, we made it. You know, making my sandwich is very much like how the Grand Canyon was made. If you think about this white piece of bread and the mustard on top of it as one of the sedimentary layers, and then this piece of cheese could represent the next layer that was deposited on top of that. These pieces of salami would then represent the next youngest sedimentary layer. So the white bread would be the oldest layer and the salami would be the youngest layer. And then sometimes, after layers are deposited, they're then removed again. And then later in time, more layers are deposited on top of those. The Grand Canyon is not a complete record of time. Some layers are missing. The top layer was laid down about 250 million years ago. The layers which tell us about the age of dinosaurs and our own human history should be on top of the plateau. These layers have been eroded, washed away by wind and rain over a very long period of time. The layers may be missing at the Grand Canyon, but they still exist nearby at a place called Echo Cliffs. The rocks in these cliffs were once present above the Grand Canyon, but have been eroded. They are millions of years younger than the top layer of the Grand Canyon. We know this from the fossilized dinosaur tracks that have been found in these rocks. Recorded in the rocks of the Grand Canyon are about 2,000 million years of the Earth's history. It has helped to write an important chapter of the Earth's past.